What's up everyone? In today's lesson, we're gonna dig into how pentatonic scales can be a really important foundation to your improvisational language and how they can help you build great melodies and better lines. <laughs> Now, the pentatonic scale and its many uses is a pretty big topic. So we're going to break this down into some chunks, and this is just going to be part one that we're going to talk about today. We're going to cover this over a couple of lessons. And we're really going to lay some foundations today about just sort of like the basic of how we build the scale, how we practice some kind of fundamental vocabulary and patterns through it, and then we how you apply it to some tunes in the most straightforward fashion. So to get started, let's look at an example. We're going to use the tune Can Whoop Island by Herbie Hancock. This is a great tune, especially if the pentatonic scale or its many uses are kind of new to you because it only has a couple of key centers that we have to worry about. And we can work on kind of how we flex through different pentatonic scales over these key centers. So let's hear an example of me just improvising kind of in a pentatonic fashion or kind of making that the sort of center point of my improvisation through one chorus of this tune. <laughs> Right, this is a sound that we're probably all pretty familiar with. It, it's, it's everywhere in jazz and actually many different styles of music. This is just a foundational music theory element as we learn how to build melodies. While many of you are probably already familiar with this, let's first take a look at how we spell this scale in its most basic form. We're going to start in the key of C just because it's easy for us to see some of these theoretical concepts when there are no flats or sharps or anything like that. So we have two pentatonic scales. We have the major and the minor pentatonic. Our major pentatonic is based off of a root a second, a third, a fifth, a sixth, and then a root again. It sounds like this. We also have a minor pentatonic, which is based off of the root, the flat third, the fourth, the fifth, the flat seventh, and then the root again. It sounds like this. So that's kind of the starting point. And most of you are probably already familiar with that if you're checking out this lesson. The question might be, well, why is this so versatile? Why does this work in so many different ways? Because we have sort of a scale that is missing some of the notes that we think is typical to one of our kind of like diatonic major scales or minor scales, it leaves some sort of ambiguity about the key center that we're in. And we can connect these scales kind of in different ways over different chords that can provide us different colors on the chord, sometimes inside, sometimes outside. But that versatility is, I think, really what we all love about this scale is we can sort of shift between major and minor, possibly different colors, by maybe only shifting like kind of one scale or playing one scale over an entire set of chord changes. We'll get into that a little bit more at the end of this lesson and in some of the future lessons. First, let's talk about how the heck we actually practice this to get this under our fingers just in a foundational way. If this is a brand new concept to you, you might want to spend a little time just working those scales that we just went over in all 12 keys. That is going to get you familiar with how to build these and that type of stuff. That will be a necessary step before we get into the next things we're going to talk about here. But if you feel like you already have kind of these scales a little bit under your fingers, at least in some of the keys, let's look at a few ways we can practice these that are going to, first of all, really help build our technique, get us good fluency in this sort of sound, and then also give us some built-in vocabulary that we can use when we are soloing. Just like any other scale, we're going to put this into some different groupings of notes and build some little patterns out of it. So let's start with a three note grouping. So we're going to take the first three notes of the scale, then the next three notes, then the next three notes. In this case, we're going to play it in triplets. Now the example here, I'm going to use a minor pentatonic. You could do this on major pentatonic as well, but we're really going to use minor pentatonic for all of these examples. And we're going to stay in the key of C to make it nice and easy to kind of see what is going on. So here is our three note grouping um, in C minor pentatonic. Now, we could also do a four note grouping, and since I'm going to four note groupings, now I'm going to play these in eighth notes. So let's hear what that would sound like. Now, 
Now there I went one extra note above and one extra note below, just to sort of like round out the pattern. And ideally you would play these across sort of your entire usable range. These examples I just play in one octave, just to kind of keep it simple. So this way of practicing scales, whether it be pentatonic scales, major scales, minor scales, of developing different patterns you can do, whether it be sort of scalar patterns like this, maybe intervallic patterns such as scales in thirds, scales in fifths, is absolutely crucial to our development of our technique. Now this, it does have the additional benefit for us as improvisers, is we're sort of getting some great built-in vocabulary um, with those different ideas. And hopefully you heard that in the example still at the beginning that I kind of relied on a few of those type of things to kind of build some of my ideas. If you want some extra support practice and those including like worksheets with that stuff written out in all 12 keys, practice videos and play-alongs of me actually working it with you with a metronome at some different tempos, I encourage you to check out the virtual studio. You can find the Patreon link down in the description. You know, there's a couple different levels that you can join and get some great additional material that accompany these weekly lessons. That's a new thing to this channel and I hope some of you will take advantage because I think that that will really help you to continue to grow as jazz trombone players. Okay, once we've got a good handle on just like, hey, I can play the pentatonic scale, maybe I've got a couple of these patterns together, better yet, maybe I've got a couple of pieces of vocabulary together. We're not gonna talk about vocabulary too much in this lesson. Some of that's in the, uh, the virtual studio lesson that you can check out. But we've talked about that a lot on this channel about really trying to build that vocabulary and pentatonic scales are a great way to do that. But once you have all that kind of stuff under your fingers and you wanna start applying this to some tunes, let's talk about how to do that because we're not necessarily just going to use the same pentatonic scale on every chord through an entire tune. Let's kind of take this tune apart um, that we did from the beginning, Kennewoop Island, and look how we can apply some of this stuff. All right, so for our tune here, we have basically three different chords. We have an F minor chord to start, a D flat dominant seventh chord for the next phrase, a D minor seventh chord for the next phrase, and an F minor chord to end again. Now, I would caution you, some play-alongs of this that you could find online, for my opinion, are wrong on the form. And I hate to just tell people they're wrong, but if you listen to the original recording, this tune, the solos always start on the first F minor section, then it's D flat, D minor, F minor again, and then the solo ends after how many choruses. A lot of play-alongs actually have eight bars of F minor up top. And that is not how Herbie Hancock plays it, at least not on the original recording. Again, it's a 16 bar tune. We could kind of think of it as A, B, C, A, through our form. And that's an important distinction to keep in mind. I've played at many a jam session where the form on this tune gets a little bit funky because people um, are not absolutely clear like how the solo form is actually structured. So important to keep that in mind and go check out the original recording to really see what's happening here. Okay, back to our chords and how they connect to pentatonic scales. So the first step is just to think, I'm gonna build pentatonic scales off of the root of these chords. So for F minor, we would build an F minor pentatonic. That one's pretty obvious. How about for D flat dominant seven? Now there, we really just wanna look at the triad. It has a major triad. It has a D, an F natural, and an A flat. So we're gonna use the D flat major pentatonic here. We're not even gonna worry about the seventh because we don't encounter that in this scale. And then finally, we have D minor seven. So this way of looking at pentatonic scales is probably the one that is most familiar to all of us. We're just building them from the root, knowing if we have to do major or minor, and building melodies from there. It works great. Uh, it really gets connected with that sort of like pentatonic sound. So let's hear an example of me doing this with a play along. Now, with these examples of that we're gonna look at now, I'm gonna play relatively simply so that we can really hear how like these different approaches kind of like change the flavor of the pentatonic scale as it relates to the chords. So this is always basing off of the root of the chord that we're on and just shifting if we're on major or minor. Okay, our next step to understanding how to really get the most mileage out of this scale and really utilize it to its best extent is understanding the connection between relative major and minor. 
So just like in our regular old scales, major scales and minor scales, they are connected via relative major and minor, meaning that uh, two scales will have the same key signature, um, but different tonics, so different starting notes, and that's gonna determine our tonality. So for example, if we are in the key of F minor here um, to start our song, our relative major would be A flat for that key center because those two keys are relative to each other. And so we could think about A flat major pentatonic on this particular chord. Now, they're the exact same scales. It's the same way that it works in major and minor scales. And so it's really all just about like sort of where you're hearing the tonic and how that's helping you to build other ideas. There are certainly things that I think of like when I play sort of like major sounds, um, melody shapes, that type of thing, that I can sort of like fit into minor here and it can give me some sort of new ideas. And that's really what we wanna think about. So we could do this on each one of these chords. So for example, when we go to D flat, major, because we're playing a dominant chord, we're gonna think about the relative minor. So it's gonna be B flat minor. When we go to our D minor seven chord and think D minor pentatonic, no, instead we're gonna think about the F major pentatonic. And all this is a little bit of sort of mental gymnastics, and some people might say that this is a semantical argument. However, I think it's important that we develop ways to think about how we connect the theory that's floating around in our head and the ideas that we are hearing. You know, if I'm really hearing a major idea, sometimes I might not know exactly what that is if I don't have a little theoretical concept to maybe tie it to. And eventually maybe my ears just guide me, but especially when we're getting this together, combining those two things, sort of our ear and our intuitive sense and the theoretical side of things can be very, very helpful. So let's check out what that would sound like. Again, I'm gonna try to play relatively simply and clearly so that way you can really hear, hey, I'm really trying to imply sort of like the relative major or minor on these different chords. <laughs> Our final way that we're going to talk about sort of like flexing this scale a little bit today is basing everything off of the fifth of whatever chord we're on. So this really starts to get into some of the versatility of this scale and sort of the way it can kind of lead you to different sounds and finding different flavors and different colors over one chord. And the other parts of this sort of pentatonic lesson, we're really gonna take apart some of this type of stuff and how you can really kind of stretch the harmony using pentatonic scales. But for today, when we're thinking off the fifth, we're still gonna rel be relatively inside. Um, this is probably just gonna help maybe our ideas and our melodies feel a little bit less resolved. Uh, they can still feel, like I said, very inside, but depending on what notes we choose, we can feel a little more up in the air and then eventually hopefully they do resolve. So let's look at what this would look like from a theoretical standpoint and then we'll check it out with the play along. So if we're on F minor, we are gonna base a pentatonic scale off of the fifth note of that scale. So that is a C. And what we need to think about is again, knowing whether we wanna use major or minor. So to start with, we're gonna think about using the C minor pentatonic. And that is because if we wanna stay the most inside, we would think that, all right, I'm on F minor, so I have an F, A flat, C, E flat. So if I start in that C, I have a C to an E flat, and then if I think about the nine of that chord, I also have a G on top. So I have sort of that like C minor triad kind of embedded in that F minor chord. That tells me I wanna use an F minor pentatonic. So that sounds like this. <laughs> So it just sounds like pentatonic right now, but when we go to actually put it with a play along, you're gonna find that it just gives my solo a little bit different feel. And there's still an F in that scale. So there's lots of opportunity where I still can resolve. And many of those notes are the same as in our F minor pentatonic. It's really mostly the G that, that's different, but we can still use that to kind of get us to some different melody shapes. So we would do the same thing on each chord. So D minor seven is gonna be exactly the same. We're gonna to go to the fifth, which is A, and build a minor pentatonic off of that because it's the same bit of theory. Now, the dominant seventh chord, we might wanna think about that one. So I would ask you to do the same procedure where we think, all right, I'm gonna build sort of a chord above this D flat chord. We might maybe think of it as what's called an upper structure triad, possibly. It's not really an upper structure because it, it doesn't use um, all the extensions, but it's in that same concept. Um, we're gonna start in the fifth, so we have an A flat. We also have a C flat in that chord. So that right there is gonna be a minor third. So if we put our E flat, which is again the nine, 
uh, above that D flat, then we're gonna get an A flat, C flat, E flat. So there is a minor chord. So again, we're gonna use a minor triad here, thus a minor pentatonic. So we're gonna use A flat minor pentatonic. Now clearly that scale has a G flat in it, which some of you might be saying, Sean, that's an avoid note on D flat seven. I'm not gonna play that. Well, yes and no. It all depends on how you use it. Yes, there's gonna be a momentary clash if you hang out on that G flat against the F natural that's in the chord. That's not necessarily bad. It's an opportunity for tension and release. Or if you're playing a line that's moving quite quickly, nobody's gonna know. If your line is strong, your melody is strong, um, your ear will sort of like accept the dissonance in the same way that when we're playing the blues and it's a dominant chord and we play, you know, a flat a third or a fourth, you know, we kind of accept that um, because the melody is strong. So I won't get too hung up on those sort of like small indiscretions of like if it really is like correct on the harmony. Now, the only thing we didn't talk about was if we have a major seven chord. So if we have a major seven chord, let's take F major seven, for example, even though we don't have that in this tune, we would then, building it off the fifth, have a C to an E natural. And again, if we added our nine, we would have a G. So now we have a C major triad. So the one we want to think about on a major seven chord would actually be the major pentatonic. So you could sort of think both an F major pentatonic and a C major pentatonic. There's a couple other ones you could think in there as well, but we will cover that in a future lesson. So let's look at this with the example and see how this sort of changes the flavor of my solo. Admittedly, pretty subtle change. And you might just be saying, Sean, well, you just made different musical choices. And I did. But the kind of theoretical direction I was thinking sort of like led me to hear different things and the two interact with each other. You know, it's a conversation between kind of the two halves of your brain. And I think that's what you want. So you can kind of access these different sounds and don't just end up kind of getting stuck in one flavor of this sort of scale. Cool. Hopefully that helps you start to build your sort of repertoire of how you manipulate the pentatonic scale. If that all felt like Sean, I do know all this stuff. Make sure to check out some of the lessons that we're going to do in the future on this, because we're going to go a little bit deeper, uh, cover a little more advanced concepts of how we can, again, use this to stretch the harmony um, and all that type of good stuff the way many, many modern jazz improvisers do. If this felt like it was like right in the pocket of where you need it, um, hit up some of this information and get in the practice room so that way you'll be ready for when that next lesson comes out. All right, we'll see you in the woodshed.